decided we'll take advantage of some of these properties that the parabolas have, that is that they're symmetrical, uh, they'll open up or down, you know, all these, these different things. And then we thought, okay, so we could find this line of symmetry if we could just find two points that are straight across from each other, uh, and two fairly straightforward points to find are the x-intercepts. So if we're looking for x-intercepts, that is points on the x-axis, all along the x-axis, y is zero, the output so, we make the output zero, and figure out what x is. What x will give us a y and zero. Hopefully we can factor this. We'll do a factor by grouping. 12 times negative three is negative 36. So we think it's two numbers that multiply nine negative 36, nine and four. Oh, we can't quite, we're not quite at the factoring part yet. Breaking up that 5 to 9x minus 4x. Right, let me look at this group. What does this group have in common? 3x. That leaves 4x plus 3. What do these two have in common? Negative 1. Negative 1. That leaves 4x plus 3. We factor out the 4x plus 3. It leaves us with 3x minus 1. Set each of these equal to zero. Because we have a number times a number equals zero, so that means one of them is zero. If we do the same for that one, we'll find that we get x is one third. So, let's try to make this scale so that we can actually see these x intercepts. x is one third, x is negative three fourths. We found those two are the x-intercepts. Um, and the line of symmetry is right in the middle. So we can have the two x-intercepts together, divide by two, to find the average. Or uh, we also know that the line of symmetry is at negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. Now negative 5 24 so let's, let's just try and estimate. Negative 5 25ths would be a fifth. So it's close to a fifth. Uh, fifth is about right there. So I'm just going to draw my line of symmetry. Out there. So I think this is not quite a third. This is more like a third. And maybe this is more like three fourths. It should look more like it's in the middle. So this is where the line of symmetry is, and on the line of symmetry we'll find this special point called the vertex. The vertex. How will we find the vertex? You plug, plug that x value into the function. Right? That's, a, that's what a function is. It's input, output, machine. Hmm. So I give it this input, it'll tell me the output, and that I can plot as a point, and that point's called the vertex. Let's see, let's do that work right here. Because that'll be out of the way. Uh, so 12 times negative 5 24ths squared plus five times negative five twenty-fourths minus three. That's 12 times 25 over 24 times 24. Well, it's the same number. It's like right here. Two feet's not here. It's right here. Like 500 something like this. Negative 25 over 24. 
minus 3. 12 and 576 are going to cancel. Um, 24, negative 72 yeah. over 48. Mm -hmm. So we have common denominator, while the numerators together, what do we get? Negative. Negative, negative 97, 48. That's so wow. Let's just graph that real good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> two that's point close to 2.02. 2.02. 0833. So, er, hovering around negative two point something. Yeah. And there's a parabola. Not quite good enough. Good enough. Try and make it rounded. It's hard with these skinny ones to make them rounded, but give it your best. Does it seem right? Does, do you have a challenge on that? No. Okay. Oh, I would say great. All right, what's next? here, finding the x-intercepts, right? like this, is, this is becoming our approach for graphing parabolas just like when we graph lines, we just go right to the y-intercept, plot that y-intercept, plot it every time, plot that y-intercept. Well now, we're drawing a different kind of a shape, right? so we want to draw different points. We want to look for those x-intercepts. We'll look for the x-intercepts by making y zero. And factoring if we can. Negative 9, well, I'm going to get rid of that negative in front. I don't like that at all. So 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. Now, 9 times 4 is 36. Are there two numbers that add to negative 12 and multiply to 36? Negative 6 and negative 6. Negative 6 and negative 6. 9x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 4. These two have in common. 3x times 3x minus 2. And these two have in common? I like to take it. When this number is negative, negative, I like to take out a negative. That way, this, this number right here will be positive. So that will be 3x minus 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive. Same. 3x minus 2 and 3x minus 2. So we'll set 3x minus 2 equal to 0. We'll solve. We'll get x equals 2 thirds. And we'll do it again. We'll get 2 thirds again. Big scale here. So 2 thirds right there. That's the only x intercept. Does that mean that this is some straight line? or something? No, it's a vertex. That's just where the vertex is. That's where the vertex is. So that's our line of symmetry. We need a couple more points. Oh, um, How will we find them? You could just plug in plug zero. zero. That's an easy one. Plug in zero, zero, zero. That's all gone. Negative four. Two point there, down at negative four. We can reflect that over the line of symmetry, right? That's three fourths. Mm -hmm. So we'll go down to three fourths. Okay. One, two, three. two, three. What? Two thirds? Yeah. I'm sorry, two thirds. One, two-thirds, one, two-thirds. Right there, that's one and a third. One and a third also gives us a negative four y value.
could we have told, even before we got started, like doing anything, how do we know it opens down? Negative coefficient for x squared. Next one? Yeah, five. Five? Five orthogonals, either or. How about six? We've got a negative. X. Once again, we look for the x intercepts. And I'm going to go ahead and change these signs. So, so it was minus 9, so now it's plus 9, and I multiply both sides by negative 1. All right, 2 times 9 is 18. We look for two numbers that multiply to 18 and negative 8. We find 9. There are no numbers that do that. Where do we turn when we have a quadratic that we can't factor, but that we want to solve? So, um, yeah. Quadratic yeah. formula. So, negative b, b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So, 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 36 times 2. 72. 72 over 4. So 64 minus 72 would be a negative number. The square root of a negative number, we get an imaginary number. Sometimes, like, if we're just solving this equation, if, if the instructions for this problem were solve this equation, then we want to simplify this down with the i and simplify the square root and everything. But, uh, what we're trying to find with this equation, what are we trying to find with this equation? The x intercepts. So if we have imaginary x intercepts, they're not useful on a graph where we graph real numbers. So this tells us no x intercepts, no real x intercepts, right? Which means either we've got something all up here or all down here. But what does this tell us? The line of symmetry. Line of symmetry. You know the line of symmetry x equals 2. And on the line of symmetry, we'll find the vertex. 5 doing what? 2 in, two. Two in there. So, okay. Negative 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 9. Uh, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 16 minus 9. Yet positive 8 minus 9, negative 1. Does it go like this? No. Why not? Because it's a negative coefficient. You got the negative coefficient in front of x squared? It goes down. What else about what I've done so far tells me it can't open up? Because you don't have x squared. No x intercepts either. So <coughs> doubly, we know that it opens down. So we just need to have some other points. How about? Over here, on the y-axis, right? Plug in 0 for x. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Reflect it. Go. One more? 8. Five times negative three is negative fifteen. Two numbers multiply to negative fifteen and add to two. Five and negative three plus five x minus three x minus three. Five x in common here, x plus one. Negative three, x plus one. X plus one times five x minus three. Set these both equal to zero, x equals negative one, x equals three fifths.
symmetry, negative b to a, that's 2 over 10, or negative 10, negative 1 fifth. Why is that bad? Well, it would be untrue. It would be untrue because it would be equal. Both sides would yeah. be equal. Any, I mean, that's what graphs are. They are all the points that represent x's and y's. When you plug them into the equation, which is usually an equation, both sides are equal whole point. Like the graph is all of the x's and y's that work in a particular equation that are solutions to an equation. Well, this isn't an equation. We don't want both sides to be equal. So points on this parabola make both sides equal, which is false. One side has to be greater. So we tell the reader of this graph by drawing a dotted line to not consider points on this parabola, because they will make both sides equal, and that is not okay. Which side do we want to be? We want one side to be bigger, right? We want which side to be bigger? No, the, I mean this equation, you know, this inequality here. Which side needs to be bigger? Y needs to be bigger, right? We need the y values that are bigger. Where are the bigger y values? Above. So anything above. Shading, I'm really showing you like all of these points work too. All of these points. Well, these are the only points that work because the points on the parabola do not work. They make both sides of the uh, inequality equal, which is not okay. But if I pick one of these points, from up here somewhere, then this y value will be bigger than what you get when you plug in the x value. This x value of 1. If I plug in 1 into the function, I will get some negative value. So this guy right here, which is 1, comma, let's call it 3 and a half, is going to be bigger than this y value. Right? All of the points above. Also solution. All right, and then you got that's one from each. Let's pass in the homework. All right. Once again, try to find the x-intercepts. Zero for y. Subtract 3 divided by 2, so you get x equals negative 3 halves. 
This one is x equals to one third. intercept negative three halves that's right there we'll find our line of symmetry negative b over 2a negative b over 2a seven twelfths okay uh, this is going to open up so i'm going to do some work over here it's going to play six times negative seven twelfths squared plus 7 times negative 7 twelfths times 3, 6 times 49 over 144 minus 49 over 12 times 3, 6 times over 10 is 49 over 24 plus 49 over 12 minus 3 is 1. We've got a common denominator of 24, so that's minus 1, no, minus 98 over 24 minus It's about, well, yeah, it's about negative 5.04. So here, okay, let's see, negative 7 twelfths, that's going to be our, uh, our line of symmetry. Uh, 6 twelfths would be a half, so 7 twelfths. intercepts in the vertex. So where's this? One third comma zero of course. And this one negative three halves zero and the vertex. Questions? Some fraction stuff, but it's the end of life. There are fractions, in fact, all the time. quadratic as we just did in this previous example and many examples prior. When we factor it and we find the x-intercepts, that's what it's factored. It's called intercept form because right away we can find the intercepts and right away we can find the vertex. Here's what I want you to think about the vertex. For one, uh, think about that coefficient of x squared, like if you were to multiply this out, x minus 1 times x minus 1. Uh, do you think you get a parabola that opens up or down? Positive here, right? Positive in front. If I were to multiply this out, that x squared would come out to be a positive. So it would open up. All right? Let's establish that. It's going to open up. All right? So the vertex in this case is going to be bottom. Right? It's going to have some minimum values, some smallest value, smallest y value possible. So, see if you can't, in a minute or less, 
just from the way that looks, don't expand it out, just use it the way that it looks. Can you quickly figure out what is the smallest output that you can get from this function? Plug in an x and you get out a y. Plug in an x, you get out a y. Three even? Negative three. Negative three? Okay. Let me get a little more common. <coughs> can we get three out of the function? Can we get negative three? smallest number you can get out of this function. Hmm? Not even sure agrees. Yeah, agrees. Okay. Okay, if it's not three, then find a smaller number than three that you can get out of this function. Come on guys, you, you put something in for x and you get something out for y. Just try it. Just plug some things in for x. See if it's possible. Right? Develop some intuition about it. something in for x. Like that. Then for x no All you do is you subtract one yeah. from it, you, you square that number, and you add. Because this, you have to put one in for x, and then one minus one is zero. But so if you try to get negative, you put negative in the first square. So it's if, let's keep the same thing. If there is a smaller y value, then then x, x minus 1 squared would have to be negative. You'd have to take 3. We can see how we can get 3. You plug in 1 for x, and you get 0, 0 squared, plus 3. So no plus 3 is 3. So if we're going to get anything less than 3, we'd have to take 3 and subtract from it. That's the only thing that's going on, is you're adding 3 to something. This something would have to be a negative number. It has to be a negative number. But, you ever get a number, negative number out of squaring something? No? Square a positive, you get a positive. Square a negative, you get a negative. So, the best we could do would be to add 0 to 3. Everything else that you plug in for x will give you something bigger than 3. Agreed? 3 is the absolute smallest that you could possibly get. And what x value do we use to get 3? Yeah, we plug in 1, we get out 3. Plug in 1, get out 3. And there is no other x value that you could possibly plug in that would give you something smaller than 3. Possible. This is the absolute minimum value you can get out of this function. It's the smallest value you can get out of this function. Okay. When we talk about minimums and maximums, that's the that is what we call the vertex. For a parabola that opens up like this one, it's going to have a minimum value at the vertex. For one that opens down, it's going to have a maximum value at the vertex. So we just found what. There it is. Because it's written in such a way that it makes it very clear. The smallest number we can get for 3. Anything we plug in for x, try it yourself. Anything you plug in for x, you're going to subtract 1 from that. You're going to get some non-zero number, right? whether it be positive or negative. You're going to square it. That's going to be some non-zero number, positive now, because you squared it. And you're going to add it to 3, which will be bigger than is the absolute smallest we can get. So we have found the vertex, and now that we see what's going on here, it will not take very long, right? Let's we'll come back to this in a second. But what is the? What is, is this going to open up or down? Do you think? Up again, right? Because there's a positive here, 
Enemy multiplied this half, the x squared will get multiplied by a positive number, and so it'll be positive. So open up. So it has a maximum or a minimum value? Minimum. It has a minimum value, and that minimum value is how big? Okay, so and now we also know to get negative 5, what do we plug in for x? 2. 2, and so where is our vertex? 2, two negative 5, there's our vertex. Okay, let's open up or down. Will it have a maximum or a minimum value? A minimum value. The minimum value will be negative And what x value do we use? Negative three. Good. Negative three. Negative three, negative six. Let's keep finding vertices. Open up or down? Up. Maximum or minimum? Minimum, minimum up. What x value do we use? Negative four. Negative four gives us negative three, and that will be our vertex. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Ooh. Open up or down? Down. Yes, yeah, so it will open down. We'll have a negative in front of the x squared. So we'll have a minimum or a maximum value? Maximum. We'll have a maximum value. Of two. A maximum of y equals two. And what x value will we need to use? This still works, right? Even though there's a negative in front. We get a negative one plus one is zero. Squared is zero. Negative zero. Negative zero. Here it's just zero, right? So negative one gives us a zero there, which will give us our maximum value of two because now we're going to square a number, okay? Let's say we put in negative, no, let's say, we, yeah, let's put in negative four. Negative four for x, just, just to show. That no matter what we do, if we plug in something other than negative 1, we're going to get something smaller than 2. Because here we're going to square negative 3 before we multiply by this negative, right? We're not going to multiply this negative by negative 3 and get 3 squared and get 9. Right? Don't you think? Agreed? Because order of operations that we agreed to, the agreement, not the law, but the agreement is exponents first, then multiplication. Exponents, then multiplication. So we exponent this first. We take it to the second power, and then we multiply by the negative one. So that part's gonna give us a negative nine. We're gonna add two to that, we're gonna get negative seven, smaller than two, just like we said. Maximum value of two. And no matter what you plug in for x, if it's not negative one, you're gonna wind up subtracting something from two, and therefore getting something smaller than two, the two is clearly the maximum. So negative one, two, that's where our vertex is. We're going to have something that opens down. Where's the vertex here? Uh-uh. No? No what? No. It's just no? This parabola doesn't have a vertex. No. You can't do it. Okay. Do you have a negative six? No. Will it open up or down? Down. It'll open down. Multiply this out, then... You'll get an x squared minus 14x plus 49 multiplied by negative 2. So you get a negative 2x squared, so we know it's going to open down. It's going to have a maximum value. It will have a maximum value of y equals negative 6. Because even though there's a negative 2 there, still, look what happens when you plug in 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. Right? Okay, that's 0. Squared, still 0. Multiplied by negative 2, still 0. Right? If I plug in a 7, I'll still get 0. Minus 6. Still works. Still works. This is kind of fun, actually. Of course it is. Every day. All right. So we've done the vertex for all of these. Let's go back to the first one and finish it up. Should we take a break? No, but we can just have a break. Yeah, you can have it since you asked. Yeah. Okay, so we need the rest of this parabola, which means we just need some other points. A couple of points. 
Take a point, reflect it over the line of symmetry. Got enough, enough points to graph it. So, plug in zero, why not? Now it's not as simple as when we used to plug in zero, because it's written differently. It's actually easier in this case to plug in one. That's the nice one, that's the one. But that's all easy stuff. Zero minus one squared plus three, so we get negative one squared plus three. We get one plus three, that's four. So we plugged in zero, we got out four. We reflect it, two, four. We already did that, right? That's where we get the vertex, 2, negative 5. We're coming back and going back through these. Plug in 0. Plug in 0. 0. We can even do it in our heads. Negative 2 squares, 4 minus 5. Negative 1. Reflect that over the line of symmetry. Okay, this one's yours. Go ahead. Finish this one. Zero, negative three, you got that back? Uh, Zero, I don't <laughs> think so. Did you just wing it? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> Zero, three. Three squared. Oh. <laughs> three. Three, zero, three. Just regular old we'll reflect three. that over the line of symmetry. Yeah, hey, I was close. Mm -hmm. That was only a negative. Mm -hmm. All right, so then everybody, well, we're going to internalize this one. We're not going to shout it out. Let Everybody working individually. Individual work here. Okay, what's another point we can find? Zero. Zero, zero for x, 13 for y. So Hunter got that as well, so I'm just gonna see that color, right? We got the same thing. I uh, go over four, so go over one, two, three, four, 13. To plug in zero, that's pretty pretty high up there. Maybe I can just plug in like negative two. I don't know, like it's harder. It's two squared minus three. Four minus three is one. So we put in negative two. We got out one. That was pretty close. And then if we go two this way, well that's not as Last one, individual. Give me another point. All right, what are we plugging for x? Hopefully not zero. Six. Eight. Sounds like the same strategy. Zero really is a doozy. Six. Six. Seven squared. Six, negative two times negative one squared. If you plug in eight, you just get eight minus seven is positive one squared, which is going to be the same as negative one squared. So we got one times negative two, negative two, minus six, negative eight. So six, negative eight. Yes, that's right. And eight, negative eight. Who 
Hooray. 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 Hooray.
plus 30 over here. X plus we'll do x plus 6, and x plus 6 will be the two identical factors. Which one do you multiply out will give us? 36. Subtract. Subtract 36. Negative. Negative 6. So x plus 6 squared minus 6. Vertex is? Negative 6. What makes this so easy? Like, what could I change about this to make it slightly more difficult? If you have a negative coefficient. Negative for? Okay. How about how about this number right here? Yeah, like it's an odd number. Okay. Uh, so let's just get one more. Um, this in vertex form in earlier, we had an in vertex form uh, that had a that had a, a multiple outside of the parentheses. So let's move that negative 21 over here. And then from this group, let's factor out negative three. And we will complete the square inside here. Because if we complete the square on this, we find that number, then we'll be able to write it as negative 3 times something squared, you know, plus or minus something over here. If I did that, then I would have... Let's do it. I mean, why not? We're going to have a little extra work, but that's fine. Okay, so we can do that. So we'll just do like the scooching inside the parentheses here. Mm -hmm. Can we just divide by negative 3? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like both divide both sides by negative 3? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Normally we divide both sides by negative 3 when it's equal to 0, which it is not. It's equal to y. If we divide both sides by negative 3, we'll have f of x divided by negative 3 equals x squared includes 4x plus 7. So we have to have that negative 3 there. You see how, like, this part's going to become the square, and then, well, the we are supposed to have some stuff outside the parentheses. That's why I just took the negative 21 over here. Let's, let's see what happens. We'll complete the square. Uh, okay, we'll do it my way. Should I subtract 4? Uh, no, you added 4. <laughs> well, I added 4 here, right? The, the approach of using 4 is add 36, subtract 36. Uh, uh, add 4, subtract 4. Or wait, go back. 
not that one. Uh, add 16, subtract 16. Okay. So should we add 4, subtract 4? Yeah. Because this 4, where is this 4? In the parentheses. And the parentheses is multiplied by? Negative. So this 4 isn't really 4. It's actually worth, on this right side of the equation, negative 12. So to cancel out, to cancel out negative 12, you add, add 12. That looks good. Good and not good. Add 12. So you get negative 9. So you get negative 3 times x plus 2 squared minus 9. And the vertex is negative 2, negative 9. And is it a maximum or a minimum? A maximum. It opens down. It's a maximum. Wait, how do you get to 2 in the store? Because if you plug in negative 2, you're going to get 0. Short assignment. Today, that was it. Next class. Have quests. Quest. Quest. Oh, is, is in all this graphing stuff, oh, okay. including what we did today. <laughs> so, you know, x intersects, vertex, minus symmetry, vertex form. Using completing the square to write in vertex form. Test. Yeah. Well, that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. Grouping. Grouping. Completing the square. Oh, God. And the quadratic formula. We need some major. Do we have a review date? Do what before the test? Review some parts of. Yeah. Do some review. Yeah. It's not like a whole day, but we need to do that. Completing the square. Completing the square? We just completed the square to write vertex for it. Quadratic formula, uh, factoring, all of these are just a way to solve a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation like this. trying to solve these quadratic equations. Okay. We start out trying to uh, factor this. It's not going to factor. It's not going to factor. Um, so we try a different approach uh, to solve this guy. And completing the square is one of those things that we can do. Now if we just scooch this negative 3 over, it would have been the same as if we just added it to both sides. Why not? Just add three to both sides. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, we have x squared plus 16x plus something. We're not sure what it is yet. We need two identical factors. What will those factors be? Eight. X plus 8 and x plus 8. And that will give us a? 64. We're going to keep it balanced, so add 64 to one side, add 64 to the other side. So equals 60, not 64, 67. X plus 8 equals 67. Squared. Squared equals 67. Square root of both sides. X plus 8. Square 67. Subtract 8 from both sides. There are the solutions using. One of them is zero-ish, just close yeah. to zero. Negative eight 
plus something that's almost eight. Yeah. Because we're just barely, barely positive. <laughs> and then you have something that's close to negative 16. Negative eight minus something that is almost eight. Yeah. That's completing the square. I mean, it can make it. No, no, we're we're good. Good. That's okay. We don't want to keep trying to use them for the test. Yeah, the chip. Yeah, for the whole <laughs> 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 The chip has been used. The chip has been used. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, wait, wait. I thought it's time for homework. What? All I have to do is watch it. I'll ask my question after. Maybe. Maybe. There you go. Okay, let's look at this one real quick. We should go back to see. You see, you got this five, which is odd, which is not difficult to do. So that's a little hard. It's not provable. Well, we're using completing the square. It's not completing the square options or something. They all are. But you have to use fractions. Yeah, we do. So it'll be five halves. Twenty-five fourths. So we'll add twenty-five fourths to the other side. So this is twenty fourths plus twenty-five fourths. Uh, well, okay, we're going to do that. Well, yeah, it's the same. We'll take the square root of both sides. The square root of this is x plus five halves. The square root of this plus or minus the square root of 45 over 2 x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 45 over 2. Does that have a common denominator? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay. 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 Up to you. You can ask review questions. Mm -hmm. So on the directions when it says find the maximum and minimum, do you want us to like write max and then this? Or you could, uh, if you graphed it, you got this parabola, and say this is at 3, 7. You can just point right there, 